Joining me now is outspoken NIAA critic and leader of One Nation, Pauline Hansen. Pauline, thank you for your time tonight. What is your reaction to the results of this Audit Office report into the NIAA? And does it surprise you that while this Audit Office report came, town, came out two days ago, usually reports like this from the Audit Office are covered extensively by the media, it's it's flown under the radio. Ra uh, it's flown under the radar. We haven't heard a word about it. <laughs> well, in some ways, that doesn't surprise me. But I, I've got to say thank you very much to yourself and to Sky for actually putting me on to speak about this. Came out two days ago. No report about it whatsoever. Nothing in the media. And we're talking about one over one billion dollars that was given in grants, fifteen hundred activity statements between twenty one and twenty two that haven't been, you know, investigated. What the what even another thing is the Australian National Audit Office report standards. Um, they stated that the NIAA doesn't maintain evidence of the qualifications of the investigators of staff in its compliance and fraud branch. So do they have the right qualifications to actually do the job? That's one question. So the branch didn't even track or review performance measures according to the relevant Australian government investigative standards. And as you said, fraud risk assessments were out of date, missing or did not even meet the NIAA risk management performance requirements. And I'll tell you another thing. Half of the new grant opportunities since May 2022 did not have fraud risk assessments. So we're talking about departments around about four and a half billion dollars, but this comes under the Prime Minister and Cabinet also. Now I've raised issues about the NIAA in the past and on the floor of Parliament. Um, Shari, I have actually raised about misappropriation of monies. I want accountability. I've called for audits of mm. Aboriginal um, organisations. We're talking about monies that have given in grants to land councils and also to... There's over 3,000 corporations, Aboriginal corporations. I want to know where has this money gone? Do mm. we have a performance review? Do we know if we're getting value for our buck? And I don't believe mm. that we are. And I mean, no one wants to talk about it because you're, you're called a racist. Taxpayers have, have a, you know, they can, should be screamed from the rooftops and they should know where their dollars are going. This body in total is being funded to the tune of $4 billion, uh, $1 billion in that one-year period that the Audit Office assessed its actions. But $4 billion for the NIAA, it hasn't got fraud oversight, according to the Audit Office. Um, and the Parliament's now has voted to have a referendum on the voice to Parliament. The big question is why Indigenous disadvantage in Australia isn't improving with all the billions of dollars that is being directed to the problem. Do you think oversight of where the money is going, how it's spent, is one of the problems here? Uh, Shari, I've been calling about that for years and years and years. You know, I think there's a lot of nepotism. I think there's a lot of uh, corruption that happens in these, these organisations. Like the, the Aboriginal Legal Aid was pulled up years ago that uh, there was not enough accountability. Any other government department, you actually have to be accountable for the taxpayers' dollars. It just everyone turns a blind eye to the Aboriginal organisation. You mm. know, and that's my, my assessment of it. And um, I'm not saying it is, but... I, as a taxpayer, I want to know where this money's going. When you have 80% of Aboriginals live in the in regional areas and the cities, only 20% in communities, you've mm. got an estimated 812,000 a claim who tick the census box. I don't believe there's that many in Australia anyway. But the fact is that we're spending over $33 billion a year in the Aboriginal industry, and I'll call it the gravy train, but it never seems to make a difference. Why, Shari? Why haven't yeah. we investigated it? $33 billion of dollars that goes to 812,000 people claim to be Aboriginal, a lot of them don't even get any funding out of this money whatsoever. So look, there's a big question mark here and I'll keep asking the questions. Look, I want to move on to another topic. Uh, Brittany Higgins reportedly received a taxpayer-funded payout of up to $3 million as a result of how uh, she claims she was treated when she... Um, complained about uh, being raped in Parliament House. Now, there was a story on the Daily Mail last night that one of your own staff members made a similar complaint against a former Labor MP, but yet received not a cent. Why do you think there has been this hypocrisy in how these cases were handled? 
Well, um, yeah, one of my staff members many years ago was actually um, had the evidence there that was sexually harassed over it and uh, the fact is nothing happened about it but the government kept pouring money into the defence of the um, of the person right yeah who yeah. just kept running up the debt so the other person had to walk away from it you know guess what because he was male this is a female you have the feminist you have everyone screaming from the rooftops uh, how, how um, she was hard done by you know Shari I have my questions over this whole case and the way it was handled is pathetic I do not believe it was the government's um, uh, responsibility to pay her out that money you know she has to take responsibility for her own actions and go into Parliament House at that time of night it wasn't the taxpayers fault mm. the taxpayers shouldn't have paid it out mm. the government shouldn't have paid it out that's my opinion Mm -hmm. And the whole the way the whole case has been handled by the DPP in Canberra, by the police, by the politicians, by the media, everyone. It was yeah. it was it's been a joke right from the bloody start, and that's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, highly politicised from the start. Pauline Hanson, thank you very much for your time this evening.